In this demonstration, we're going to look at some of the labeling tools found on the map tab. All right, so um, I've got my ArcGIS project open uh, and uh, I've got the map tab selected. What we're focusing in on here is uh, the tools under this labeling section. And you can see there's tools for pausing, locking, viewing unplaced, uh, there's some conversion tools, and then uh, there's some more tools here. So <clears throat> we'll start uh, with more under the more uh, drop down button. A lot of different options here. Um, Maplex, the Maplex label engine is the default labeling engine provided with ArcGIS Pro. So you'll see that it's been checked on. Uh, if you click on, if you just click on this option, it will essentially switch from the Maplex label engine to the standard label engine. Now, for most people, you're going to want to leave Maplex label engine selected as uh, as your primary labeling engine. It provides you with a lot of different options for controlling how labels are placed that you don't get with the standard label engine. So in most cases, you'll just leave this turned on. Now, there's a lot of different other options here for changing uh, label priorities, uh, label weights. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail here. These are a little bit more complex and more advanced options than, um, than what we're, we're, what we're going to be talking about in this demonstration. But there are also, are, are also a number of different options here that you can, can access. Uh, the next thing we'll look at is uh, viewing of unplaced labels. So what this will do is it'll draw in any, in any labels that could not be placed. And uh, so this comes into play, you know, when, when you're labeling features in a layer, if there's conflict between labels uh, from different features, or if there's conflict between, um, well, primarily for, for uh, labels, you know, if there's any, any conflict between labels that are being placed, and uh, then depending upon the weights and, and different uh, rules for how uh, labels are placed, you're going to wind up with some features that are just not labeled. And you can see uh, we've got a land parcel here that doesn't have a label, one here, multiple, you know, lots of different uh, parcels here that don't have labels that have been placed. And, um, and again, that's because of, there's some sort of contention. Right? And so this view unplaced button will allow you to draw in any, in any labels that could not for one reason or another be placed. Now, another reason why a label can't be placed is that by default, a label has to fit within that polygon. So when you have some of these smaller polygons, um, you know, if that label's any size at all, it's not going to be able to be placed because it's not going to fit within uh, that polygon. Now, there are other options that you can uh, uh, can uh, define that will allow you to span a piece of text or a label so that it moves, the, so that it doesn't have to be placed inside the polygon. In other words, it can move outside the polygon. But by default, that's not how things are going to go. Um, in any case, if you click on the View Unplaced button, and it's a toggle button, um, what that's going to do is it's going to show you any labels that could not be placed. And it's going to show you, and those are going to be uh, colored in, a, they have kind of a reddish color here. So you can see, you know, with uh, especially with some of these smaller polygons, the labels couldn't be placed here because you know, the pieces of text span outside of the actual polygon. They, they are outside the, the polygon that, that they should be contained within. Uh, but this is a way that you can uh, view any unplaced labels uh, should you need to do so. Now, I'll go ahead and turn it off here and it'll redraw. Uh, what I'm gonna do is bring up the label class pane for parcels. So I'll right click, go to labeling properties, and then go to position. And um, so from here, there's an option here for never removing unplaced labels. By default, this is unchecked. Uh, but what this will do is it will basically allow you to uh, turn on those labels uh, that couldn't be initially placed. Right? So now it's going to go ahead and redraw it. Now what you're going to see is you're going to get all labels placed regardless of whether they go outside their containing polygon. Uh, so there is a way of, of turning uh, in, any unplaced labels, making sure that those are going to be displayed no matter what. But if I turn this off, and that's going to be the, the default is going to have this checkbox unchecked. Uh, then you'll see that any uh, polygons that uh, where the label couldn't be placed inside that polygon, then the label goes away, right? But, but view unplaced allows you to view any unplaced labels. Now you also have the, the ability to pause the drawing. So this comes into play when you have a lot of labels that need to be drawn. 
But sometimes uh, you don't want to wait for those labels to draw. So if I'm zooming in or zooming out, there are certain times when I don't want to necessarily just wait for all those labels to be placed because it can take a fair amount of time, right? These are dynamically placed labels. And so it can take a while uh, to redraw these. So for example, if I zoom out a little bit, you'll notice there's a fair amount of time here that it takes to draw those labels, all right? So I'll zoom back in. Now if I zoom out a couple of, you, know, you can see how it takes a while to draw these. Now if I can zoom out a couple of times, now it's gonna take quite a while to label these. So I might just wanna pause this. And what pausing will do is it will just automatically pause the drawing of those labels. It is a toggle button, so if I click it again, right, then it's going to attempt to redraw those labels. Right? I'm zoomed out so far here that not many things are going to get placed. Right? As I zoom back in, we'll get more here. Right? But this pausing allows me to pause the drawing and then unpause the drawing so that it turns them on. And again, this is used for situations where you just don't want to wait for those labels to be drawn, right? You don't necessarily need for them to be drawn or you're, or you're trying to set a zoom extent in, in some different ways and you're just trying to make sure you have it, things set correctly before you uh, actually view those labels. Now you can also lock your labels as well. Um, what this will do is it'll lock the labeling for the current map and it'll ensure that labels are redrawn from the label cache. So, Anytime labels are gonna get drawn, they're gonna be put into a cache. And uh, in this case, if I've got locked labeling turned on, then it automatically knows to pull any labels that it can find from the cache as opposed to having to dynamically draw those. Other things you can do here, uh, there's a convert tool here that will allow you to convert your labels to annotation. And in an annotation, layer is basically a feature class or similar to a feature class that gets created inside of a geo database so in other words if i select convert labels to annotation what that's going to do is it's going to bring up a tool uh, that would allow me to convert my labels to annotation so you have to have a geo database that will contain that will contain these labels but assuming that you do any of the text that you see uh, on your current map then could be converted to an annotation feature class and be placed inside of the geo database and there's a tool. I'm not going to go through the whole tool here, but uh, uh, this essentially allows you to convert your labels into uh, annotation uh, feature classes that would go inside of a geo database and then be stored as more static types of, uh, of labeling. You can also convert these uh, to graphics as well. Uh, so this allows you to take individual text graphics uh, and store them in a graphics layer. All right, so that's all I wanted to, to cover here. Uh, again, what we're looking at uh, was uh, these tools found on the map tab under the labeling section that uh, relate to different types of things that you may want to do with your labels. Thanks for joining me. We'll see